Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Last night I took a break from my imaging plan of the Elephant Strang Nebula. I did want to image another night. However, I decided to go and image instead a beautiful comet passing by in the same field of view with the Summer Beehive Cluster. So the comet is C2017 K2 Penstars. And I do want to show you how I did capture it. Uh, using uh, Nina and my Altair 26 megapixels hypercam cold camera with the Skywatcher ED80 a reducer corrector with a focal length of 510 millimeters. I haven't used any filters, so no filters were, were used, and I imaged in uh, a sky with Bortel scale 4, so not too light polluted. So, say uh, medium light pollution sky. From here, actually, I'm close with Bortel 3. So, let me show you how I captured this uh, beautiful, uh, this beautiful uh, part of the sky with the comet and the summer beehive cluster. I am using a mini PC that is connected with the mount, and I'm controlling the mini PC from my desktop computer. No filter, Bortel Sky 4. Currently, no moon in the sky and we should be ready to start and for capturing I'm using Nina so I'll go now in Nina let's go here framing and slew and center right and let's see if yeah and it does the meridian flip so I need to activate that and it seems I had to press slew and center but on advanced sequencer, it should do it automatically. So it's doing the meridian flip. Let's zoom in even more and take a look closer. So let's uh, go back and it's still place solving currently to get the same position. I will go and start guiding. So, tools, auto select star, let's start. And we'll take, we'll make a sequencer, uh, add new target. And it'll be 45 images, and probably I'll go more, uh, 120 seconds. Again, 100 offset 25 minus 5 degrees. Okay, detailing on, detail every, we'll go five exposures. Let's go now imaging. So here is the comet, very nice position. I frame it at the third part of the frame around this. And we can see also the cluster, so we really have a nice position. And we can now start the sequence and we'll begin detailing at five exposures. HFR 3, so the thing is okay. The focus is good. And here we do have the, we can see the beehive cluster. Having this event with the comet, I decided to skip my uh, image gathering for the elephant trunk. But I wanted to capture this, uh, this beautiful area. Uh, I could have gone maybe with the comet more closer to the middle, maybe a little bit. But I think it's, it's good because we can capture also all these clusters. They are both in the uh, center of interest here. Okay, and here we have the comet, right? And uh, the comet will be also tomorrow. And uh, 24, 25, 26, 27. So with a DSLR camera and the uh, wide field lens, let's say 100 millimeters to 150, you still be able to capture this comet all week. However, if you want more details and uh, you go with a longer focal length, you'll be able to capture also the comet and the summer beehive cluster only a few nights. The idea was to capture them together, so this is why I took my telescope and I could use the other camera with the lens, but I wanted more details. It will be available also with another object and in uh, July 16, it will be near Messier 10. That is another occasion to, to capture it. And here we do have an uh, 
edit with a single exposure of two minutes with a comet. I uh, save the file from fits to uh, TIFF and then I did open it in bridge and then open with camera raw. And here I did make some changes. I started with the tone curve and I did play around like this until I, I was happy with the result and how the stars looked. On the rest of the channels, I did not modify them this time. And on basic, I went with exposures around 15. On 15 contrast, I from zero, I lowered it to 134. And I lowered also a little bit the highlights because you see if I go too much with the highlights, it will also uh, the sky will also be too bright. So I did lower them just a little bit at minus 15. But I could have left them on zero because also the comet is actually brighter on zero. But I went minus 15. And uh, shadows, I went uh, about 25. Whites just a little because I didn't want to oversaturate the stars. Blacks, I went minus 20. Here, depends on how you want to process, you can make the star brighter if you want. Or darker, I went somewhere in the middle, minus 20. And optics, a little bit of ignite removal and some uh, brush on the comet here. I, and gradients, linear gradients to neutralize the background a little bit and do not have any gradients. I also lowered the highlights on this star and the whites and increased a little bit the shadows and clarity on the comet. This was the first processing of a single exposure. And in the next part of the video, I'll show you also the result after I will take the images. What's going on here? One satellite is going like this one like this and one like this or they are UFOs <laughs> what interesting capture hello my friends I'm now taking calibration frames and I had to place a lot of sheets here on the telescope because it's uh, sunny outside now I'll go back to Nina and uh, already took uh, flats 20 and darks 26 because one is usually error and I'll go and cover the scope So my friends, I'll see you soon in the next part of the video. Until then, do not forget to subscribe and I wish you clear sky.